Many video game companies are pretty well known for their wrongs rather than their rights. And while yeah, no company is going to exist without making a few questionable decisions, a lot, and I mean a lot of them, have done things recently that have not only made game companies, but game consumers look bad. I mean, just look at EA with its Star Wars loot box bullshit. Not only did they lose trust in many gamers, but they tarnished the name of Star Wars and the fan base of people with it who aren't gamers, saying, just don't play it, just don't get mad. Even though they don't really understand why these systems are bad when they are put in place, and who they are really hurting. But that's a video for a whole nother day. Now look, I know gamers can seem a little bit extra. We seem like a raving maw of gnashing teeth who just can't be pleased. But I do like to pay attention to the companies who do try to do good by their fan bases. So we come back to Pocket Watch's game Tooth and Tail. This game was good. Emphasis on the was. But after the 1.3.0 update, it went from good to great, incorporating leaderboards and standardized single player maps. Back before the update, you could reset a map upwards of 30 times, and trust me, I have done that before, before you would get even a fair shot at a semi-decent attempt with a map that isn't out to fuck you over. And even then, that was just a chance. If you lost, guess what? You better pray to God that you get a map that works in your favor again. Now every mission has a map that's standard, a map that was designed and tweaked by the creators, and allows you to try a random map too. Pocket Watch Games saw a problem in their game that was there not because of greed, but just by an accident in game design. And instead of leaving it be to just be a blemish on this game, they took the initiative to actually fucking fix it and make it good, better even. Now I get it. Game companies need to increase their bottom line any way they can so they can make more money. They are a company. It's par for the course. However, it's beginning to feel like game companies want to just make the flashiest games they can before they actually make a good quality game. Focus on making a good game first and a pretty game second. That's what happened with Tooth and Tail. It's obvious that the game itself was pretty much pre-conceptualized before they started working on the graphics. And even then, the graphics seemed like pretty much something that wasn't going to take up most of their resources. I mean, pixel art is really, really good for any computer. So, you know, it really didn't take that much time or effort to really make those things. I think it's for those two reasons that I love Tooth and Tail, because it really takes those two concepts to heart to the maximum degree. It tries to stay decently manageable by many PC builds, however, anyone can run this game and it doesn't sacrifice gameplay for its graphics, you know, and that's something that's really important for me. I'd rather have a game that looks somewhat decent than a game that looks amazing but doesn't play very well. You know what I mean? Of course, that's a whole concept for another video, and it's not really something I can talk about here. However, I think it's safe to say that Tooth and Tail stands as one of the best games of 2017, and one of the most well-made RTS games of this generation. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. It really does help the channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day. I love you all. See you next time. Bye-bye.